Hello everybody, my name is Tyler Potts and welcome back to day 47 of 100 Days of Code and in this video we're going to be going over the basics of NUX, we're just going to be doing the uh, everything you need to know about getting started with NUX and then over the course of the week, so from Monday to Friday, I'll be trying to get out some more advanced NUX tutorials. So we're going to start off with basics and we might do an actual project on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on which way I feel better would be better. Maybe I'll do a Nux Advance. Nux Basics today, Nux Advance tomorrow, then Project on Wednesday and then we'll see what happens from there. Maybe if we've got more content to dish out we'll do some Nux on Thursday and Friday but at the same time if there's anything else you want me to do on those days then let me know and we'll have a look what there is to do. I just thought we might as well while we're doing it block out a week and do some focus on one thing so everyone can learn it from start to finish hit zero to hero if you get what I'm saying um, I don't know what I'm saying myself um, anyway guys so what is Nux boom Nux is a Vue.js framework it's basically Vue mixed in with node so it's got it's surf you can have surface side rendering um, or a single page application um, again same 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 concept for both you've got a different way so as you can see down here so we've got where are we? So here's the rendering mode. So you've got surface side rendering, which renders everything on the surface side and then part sends it through with one um, call, one API call, or one server call to your front end HTML page. Um, it's also better for, so surface side rendering is the best CEO boost, uh, better UX uh, user experience. And basically, it's just, it, I prefer it. I, as, as cool as, see, single page applications are. I do prefer the universal mode in Nuxt uh, just for the CEO boost. CEO and UX is the most important thing in a website I believe personally and that is why I believe it's best. Next up we can create some static sites so just pre-rendered sites. Uh, again still have CEO benefits as it says there um, but pre-rendered pages would be quite quick I believe so so Surface side rendering makes it super fast. Once it's loaded, it's loaded. You can just make an API call after that and it will constantly do. Again, single page applications, you make one call and then it's just, uh, it's everything renders into the same page. Um, as single page, as it says. Um, but again, this one means that it won't have much CEO. It means when a, when let's say Google tries to crawl your site and find information about it, it won't really be greeted with anything. It, once it will be greeted with irrelevant information, just a blank page basically. Um, other than that, that's pretty much it. So again, why Nuxt? It's performant, it's fast, it's so quick on the web. Uh, modular, so you can, again, with Vue.js, you can build components that you can just add in, replace, and do different things with. Again, PWA benefits, as I've mentioned in a previous video. Progressive web apps are taking over. Um, they, they're amazing, they're awesome on the phone, and now they've got desktop apps too. And again, the experience is just like a super fast website, which is what everybody wants, right? So yeah, so that is what a few or Nuxt is, and it's basically just a few cross with nodes masterpiece, I'd like to call it. I, I really enjoyed it when I was learning it, and now I want to share that with you. Um, so let's get started. So we don't need this page, but one thing you do need is Node.js. Um, if you haven't got it, you can download one of the two. I recommend going for the recommended, but latest is also fine. There shouldn't be any issue with it. Um, the reason for this is because you need the Node Package Manager. Again, it is run on Node, so you do need Node. Uh, but the node package manager is the main, main thing we need because we're going to be using MPX, so we need at least a version higher and a node package manager version higher than 5.7.0 or 0.2, I can't remember which one it was. Um, but with these versions, you get 6 plus, so you get I think it's like 6.5 point something or something similar, um, which is great. That's all we need. So download one of these. I've already got installed. It'll give you an installer if you're on a Mac. I'm not sure what it does on Windows, but I'm pretty sure it gives you an installer too. Hit that, run that file, make sure you, uh, uh, you get it all installed, and then to test it out in your terminal or command prompt, whichever one you're using, Mac or Windows, you want to type in here, uh, for such so you can go no dash dash version and you'll get a version S. See, I'm on 10.15.3, which is the current um, recommended or LTS long term support. 
Uh, and then we could go npm dash dash version two and get a version number for oh, hello. Uh, a version number for npm which for me currently is 6.4 which is awesome that is way higher from what we need so that is great okay so let's get started with our, our app the first thing we need to do is run mpx create nuxt app and then we want to give our app a name so we're going to call this nuxt basics um, and the reason we're using npx create, so there's enough way you could do this. You could install create Nux app as a CLI, uh, a way of creating stuff on the fly all the time. So we go uh, npm uh, i-g uh, create Nux app. And then once you've installed that, all you would run is create Nux app and the name. But we don't need to install it to our computer because it takes up room, you know. I know it might not be too much room, but it takes up room. So we're just going to use npx, which means it's calling it from the uh, node package. I don't know what the x stands for. We're going to call it mysterious. We're going to call it special place. Uh, x marks the spot. Yep, we're getting it. Which treasure? It's buried treasure. So we're going to get it from there, call it, and it's going to run the uh, function or the scripts from this create nux app and run it here. So we're going to run uh nuxt basics and hit enter this is going to go straight through for download and i will see you once this is finished okay guys so as it's come it's actually come through with the uh what you call this this setup the uh the project settings and it's asking us for a project name which we're just going to call nux basics it's going to ask for a description my flawless nux js project sounds good to me uh it's going to ask us for what server framework you use we want to use so we can configure our own express koa adonis happy feathers micro fastify but we're just going to hit none because we don't do any set we just want to let run a surfer on its own the main thing we want from this is the surface side rendering and the the configure list so that's another great benefit of nuxjs is it's you can you can set up routing and routes without having to even configure them it does it itself because it it it's quite smart you see it's it's very smart <laughs> and also the pre-rendering capability so let's hit none we don't want to have that again you can add in pwa support which is amazing but for this project we don't need it axios to make uh surf side calls or uh api calls but we're not using that this maybe in the future we'll use some of these and again the rest of it's uh a rest of it we don't need so let's just hit enter through that and now we can choose a ui framework or a component library so a ui framework is basically in few uh in normal web talk like bootstrap futify or not fut or in normal futify um and all this stuff it's normally a, like a css framework but in here they're basically a, a component library says they're a bunch of components you can use um, with a few custom classes like a, a a framework so we can so we can use it to style up our app but again we're going to hit none we don't need it we're going to hit none for the test framework we don't need it. and now this is important so choose the rendering mode we're going to be using universal then we're going to put in our name, uh, you can put your own name, feel free, I'm just going to put my name, and then we can choose a package manager. Uh, I'm going to use npm because I have it installed and I don't have yarn installed, but you can choose yarn if you prefer it. So let's hit npm and let's wait for that to install. Okay guys, so now once that's done, we're going to run cd, so we're going to follow the to get started guides. This bit is for production, we don't need that yet, we'll do that in a future video. So we're going to say cd nuxt basics and we're going to get in there and then we're going to run npm ton no run def and we're going to run the development server now let's let that run it's going to compile a bunch of things and while that compiles let's go and open up our um our app or our nuxt project in our code editor so i'm going to run from in here i'm going to say code dot from the file directory but this is actually a uh, how do you put this this is a VS Code specific thing. So if you can drag and drop your files into whatever text as you want, this is what I'm going to do because I like to use uh, VS Code. So let's open that up and put that up here just so it's up there ready. Okay, let's close that and have a look. So now our surf, our files are rendered to page. Now we can go to localhost 3000, hit enter, and there you go. You've got this basic app here. 
as you can see that was an amazing little animation for that so let's go through the file structure so again there's a lot of different things in here and the main ones you want to look out for is the pages file folder the layouts components and assets are the main ones another big thing to look at is the nuxconfig.js and this is the first one we're going to look at again if you want to change to a spa you can but we we'll keep it universal you can change it any way through your project it just decides on how it is rendered to your page um, again there's some more different things so we've got the head with title.package.name uh, which I obviously is this here Nux basics we've got our, our meta char set name just the basic stuff in there and then we've got links which links to our fafcon here again this is all just a configuration for Nux itself you've got if you have a loading by a progress bar you've got the the color you can add some CSS and I'll be showing you how to do that later on this video. Uh, plugins, so if you have plugins, again, Nux.js modules and the build configuration, like uh, again, like extending Webpack here, um, sort of thing. So we're just going to leave this for now. We don't need it just yet, um, but that is something we'll be looking at soon. Again, we've got the store, which is a few X. Obviously, if you've used few X before, you know what it is. But it's a it's a place where you do all your state management. Um, uh, using few x you've got your static files any files what won't need to be dynamic or anything you just got your static files which are always always available uh, in your static folder which is the favcon is of course uh, you got your again plugins folder which is irrelevant because we don't use any plugins but if you do use plugins these are what render obviously before your pages for you actually think you got some middleware for your surfer i believe so if you want any middleware or anything um i haven't done this yet so once i learn this i will i will teach you some middleware to do with this obviously i know what middleware is for node but i don't know how it works in nuxt um and again we've got our logo few here which is obviously this little logo here we'll go into that quickly and i'll show you how that is a component if you've done few before which i recommend you do go learn few before you do this i have some tutorials on the channel um, as you can see we have triangle 2, 1, 3 and 4 and this has a massive thing on, well it's not even that big but this is what happens, it turns it, go right, turn, go yellow, oh I'm sorry, uh, it's quite late, it is uh, 1 in the morning um, and we've basically got our, our basic app so let's go over some things, so in uh, Nux.js we can do something really awesome so as I said we'd have a configureless routing so in pages we've got our index let's remove everything in there um, yep including all that uh, let's remove this too let's change this to be called page just because I will change that up later and then we're going to have a, a section dot header and in there we're going to have a h3 with the class of title and in here we're just going to say home page and then we're going to have a h4 with the class of subtitle and that is going to say the home page we're going to remove the logo from both the script from the import and the actual components and we can remove this whole script we don't need this for this tutorial and there we go so now if we come back you'll see we have the home page right here obviously we changed the page here so we're going to change this to main as well because i want that i want to be using the uh, html5 tags diff is irrelevant in 2020 20, guys that's that's what's going to happen i'm calling it diff tags going to be irrelevant no they'll never be irrelevant but everyone uses them everyone loves them um, okay, so we've got our container, everything in there, title and everything. So that's all good, but now let's create. So now, if you want to create a new page, let's go over this. So we've got two ways of doing this. We could create a new folder, which is my preferred way, and we're going to call this about. And then in here, we will then create an index.view. So this now, so how the routing works in Nux.js, actually we've got this duck dot nux file up here we have the router and basically this looks inside of our pages folder 
right? So inside of our pages folder, it looks for roots. It'll look for index. If it sees index, it will know that it's just whatever the directory is. And because this is in the root of the pages, it is equal to just this home page or equivalent to forward slash, um, which is just this home page here. We then have our about page now I've just created where we have our index of view. So let's create a template in here. And basically it will also look for other pages. So it will look for about, which is a folder, and then it will look for the index inside of about. And that means you could go to, well, let's actually add something in this. Let's call this main.page and then a section.header and then a h3.title and say about page. Let's hit save. Let's come back here. And let's hit forward slash about. And there you go, we've got the about page tag in there. Um, then we can also do one other way of doing pages. So even though you can do um, this folder structure, which I believe is the better way, you can also just put in your file names in here. So you can do inspire.view. And now it will use the name of this fold file as also another root. So in here, we'll give it a template. We're going to give it the main oh, main.page. We're then going to say section.header. Going to have a h3.title. And in here, we're going to say inspiration. Let's hit save, refresh. Now let's type in here inspire. And there you go. You can see you've got uh, the inspiration tile. So we can go back to slash. And we've got the home page the about page and the in spire page oh and we've got a 404 page which is great that, that is great i spell inspire run and we've got our inspiration page which all works in different ways so obviously we've got the about page which works through a, a, a folder directory with an index.view page and then we have the index, which is just the root of wherever it's in. And then we have the inspire way of doing things, which all work, or the single single file way of doing things, which is awesome. Um, and they all work perfectly fine. There's no right way to do it. It's just preference, really, I believe. I don't think there's any performance, diff anything to do with performance at all, to be honest. Um, Okay, so now we've got through that, let's go through the layouts. So obviously we have this inspiration, or let's go back to the home. So obviously we have this default homepage, right? And But we have this layouts um, file, which have all your default layouts, and obviously this is our default layout. And this is what we're greeted with. So we have a style, which is our overall style on the page with some buttons and everything. We then have this template, which is surrounded by, uh, and then we have this Nux. And if you have used view routing, it is the similar to that. So where you would put router view, I believe it's called, or view router. Um, this is the same as that, but this is where it will render our views to sit in here. So if we've written above here, let's say H1 and uh, Nux to basics and hit save. As you can see, Nux Basics is right above that. But if also, if we went to About, it stays consistent on each page we go to because it's in the um, it's in the layout, so the main layout. So I think we we put in our let's say our index in our files in our pages in here will get rendered into this where this Nux um, component is. Which is awesome. So that is a really cool way to do some rendering. Um, again, another benefit, just while we're going on about benefits and stuff, another benefit to Nux is obviously the security. Because it's all ren surface side rendered, it means all your scripts and everything will be rendered on your surface side, which means um, it, they're not getting, they're not, they'll be injected to your your app instead of being available to everyone on your app uh, which also means you could do some stuff like um, it would be better to do your authentication and your sessions and stuff all through um, surface side rendering so now we've got this down let's create a header up here so where we have our div let's say header oh 
yeah, we're gonna create a header, and in this header, we're gonna have a NAF. Inside the NAF, we're gonna have three links. In the first link, we're gonna say slash, and it's obviously gonna be our home directory. Oh, wait, let me do that again. Let's say slash and then home. In this one, we're gonna have about, which is gonna say about. Again, this one's gonna be inspire, which is gonna say inspire. Save. And now let's add some classes to this. So we're gonna say class, and we're gonna say NAF link and then button hyphen hyphen gray or we'll just say green and we're just going to copy that both those classes okay so now that's on all of them that's going to look good header and now let's go back and as you can see we've actually got some buttons but there's a few things we want to change so Buttons look good and we can go to our different pages very easily now in our next app. But let's style it up. Let's say we want to add some CSS. So if you notice, we've got this home page with some default styling. But when we go to about page and inspire, we don't have those stuff, right? We don't have any of that. So let's head over to our index.view, which is our main one. And we've got the styling here. And all this styling um, is basically used for... Uh, this page but we want it to be let's say a global style for all the pages because we want it to all follow the same layout we also want to go in here and go page and we want to say the page style quickly is equal to display flex justify content center align item center and text align center we don't want to say margin zero, zero auto just to add some styling to our actual page. And then inside of our container, we just want to have flex direction, which is going to be equal to column. And that should be good now for our sign. But again, we want this to be global. So let's copy this whole chunk in here. We can remove the tags, the style tags. And now all our styling is going to be gone from that section. So now we want to create some CSS. So we're going to go into our assets and you can use SAS and everything in here, but I'm going to show you that in a different video where we uh, render our SAS. And in here we're just going to put style.css and we're going to paste in our styles and hit save. Now inside of our, it's not going to work just from posting it in our assets, of course. Um, but now we can go into our Nux config and we can actually go into our CSS and this is where you add in the roots to each piece of SAS you want and I believe it they will get loaded in the order of how you place them in this array so from the first index to the final index um, so whatever you want to render last you want to put after or last in this array and first vice versa so the, to call our assets, we don't just write assets slash style dot CSS because now we've saved that once that's rendered and we reload. Let everything render. As you can see, no styles have actually been applied. The reason for that is because assets isn't found. Even if we put a slash and we go back and we hit render and let it render all our stuff it's still not appearing. Why is that? Because it doesn't know where this is. And we need Webpack to basically inject, I would say, I don't know how you'd say it, but we need uh, Nux to inject uh, our our root, our source or our assets directory or our root directory to here. And to do that, you can either use a tilde or you can use the at symbol. My preference is the at symbol. The tilde, I think is actually becoming dep dep deprecated, depreciated because it's not it's just not used the at symbol is the the one i would pref i preferably like to use so if we go to at and now we hit refresh and we let our page render if it will render uh so we've got our style.css and in there and let's stop ourselves and re-render it because i sometimes i get it where if i don't restart the whole surfer it won't actually work and now our assets are in there I believe that's correct, right? At forward slash assets forward slash style dot CSS. That looks correct. So now let's hit refresh. And as you can see, our style's been applied to our home page. If we go to our about page, they've also been applied. And the same with our inspire page. So now we've got styling across all pages through our 
um, global CSS, as you can see here. And the, I think if we swap this out to a tilde and we stop our surfer and run this again, it should still work for this. It should still work, but I read something on the actual site saying it's you should use the at symbol to render files. So if we hit refresh, actually everything's working fine. Everything's still the same. We're gonna keep it. Uh, we're gonna swap this back out for an at symbol, um, but everything should be fine. Anyway, back inside of our default view, obviously we've got our our links and our our stuff sitting there, but we need to. Well, actually, in our style, should we say, we are basically got everything in there. But what are we missing? So column center, center, center. Display flex center center center. Is that correct? I feel like that that doesn't feel right. Okay, go back to next. Or well, not next, our default view. And inside of our default view, we want to basically do some styling to our NAF, right? So down here we're just gonna go NAF and we're just gonna add padding of 15 pixels, because you know it's kind of annoying me that it doesn't have some padding. There we go, that's better. So now we've got it looks a bit better. Now we're going across. So we've got about to page on our inspiration page, but now let's do some, just for fun now, let's get a, a random quote every single time we load up the Inspire page. So if we go to our Inspire comp uh, page, we could go into our Inspire, and then we're going to have a, here we're going to say subtitle, not subtitle, we're going to say subtitle, and we're going to put, get a script, and we're just going to say components, and it's going to say in or uh, inspire. Yeah, we're going to call our component inspire actually. <laughs> uh, I like that. And we're just going to say import inspire from, and we're going to say at slash components forward slash inspire dot few. Okay, so now we're gonna go into the components. So let's go into components, let's remove this component, we don't need it. And let's add a new component called inspire.view. Now we can create our template in here. And um, all we wanna do in here is return an H4 with the class of subtitle, so like we did before. We're gonna have an I tag just for italics and then we're gonna put Double breaks, and we're going to say quote, and then we're going to put. Oh, oh sorry, we're going to put some quotation marks around this. We're going to put a hyphen, and then we're going to pass through the author too. So now inside of our script tag, we're then going to go data. We're going to pass through some data as usual with Vue.js, and we're going to return as we normally do some some data and we're going to pass through some quotes and I have some quotes here on my other screen let me just copy and paste them just so we don't have to uh, write them all out and these are just a few uh, awesome quotes from some awesome people such as Fujita as you can see there um, if you get that then that's amazing I like you you're an awesome person and now we're going to actually have a quote which is going to be our selected quote and an author which is also going to be the quotes author and now in data we're going to go and use a life cycle or I think it's called a life cycle method or life cycle directive I'm not sure um, so in Fuges we're going to use a life cycle method just like react to uh, once the app is created we're then going to update the, the quote and the author so we're going to say let index so we're going to get a random index from the array and we're going to say math.floor to make sure it's a whole number and we're going to say math.random and we're going to times that by this dot quotes so our quotes dot length so we can get from so we can get one of every single quote in there we're then going to say this dot quote is equal to this dot quotes index dot quote and as you can imagine we're going to do the same but we'll say author instead of quote and that is basically all we need to do for our um, our page so let's go back to inspire and hit save and let's go in here and see what happens so everything looks good let's hit refresh 
and nothing has happened. Have I done components right? Inspire from inspire.view at components. Is it till day? Alright, let's try to use the app, but let's let's oh Ah, I know what I did wrong. <laughs> we've in our components we've used an array, but in reality we need some curly braces to turn it into an object. Let's hit save. Let's wait for everything to render. Now we can view this on this page. And there you go. Now we've got a quote from the Flash. It's a great quote, my favourite quote. If we hit Inspire again, or we go to About and Back to Inspire, we get a new one every single time rendered to us. So, or if we just keep clicking inspire to refresh the page as you can see it always is always inspired which is awesome so that looks good nice so what have we gone through so far so we have gone through how you would how the routing works in Nuxt how awesome it is how it's so dynamic and it's created by just your page structure um, we've gone through how you do folder structures or just to drop all your files into one folder with different names to render a different page we've then gone over components in Nuxt which is the same as normal view uh, we've gone over how you import files or sorry how you import global CSS into your uh, Nux app one other thing is though let's go to our about page and let's add in an image and now we can get an image so let's let me just go grab an image let me just oh, no, free. copy this and inside of our assets let's paste in an image which is an SVG any image do a PNG or anything and you can't just again you can't just write um, assets slash logo dot SVG and go to uh, as you can see it's already erroring it's like that doesn't exist you can't do that you can't put forward slash it's just just not gonna work no it's gonna load again you have to use a tilde or an at but I believe the in this one it definitely says you have to use an at symbol so again that is my preference uh, so we can use an at symbol or we could do tilde assets like that and logo and as you can see the logo has been printed to our page again we could do the at as well and it has the same effect so that is how you will do your at you could also put your logo inside of your static files and you can change this to static dot logo I believe it's a tilde then yes yeah, sorry so when you use static files I believe you have to use a tilde I'm guessing the at symbol doesn't work it just doesn't okay maybe it does work maybe they were, it just I didn't give it time to render there I don't know what happened there it's fine as you can see it's all worked out fine yeah okay everything works there so as you can see you can do a lot with Nux and we've only gone over a small amount of things you can do with Nux in this video guys so if you did enjoy this video leave a thumbs up if you want to see more then hit that subscribe button and as usual if you have any feedback at all good or bad drop it in the comments below so I can get back to you whatever you want if you want if you want a video request again you could all do it in the comments or you could jump over to our discord surfer drop me our, your comments and feedback in our discord channel get talking with the other developers there which are awesome you can meet new developers make build up a slow community and actually uh, build a network of developers if you wanted to um, also you can also drop video requests in there there's different sections in there you can use to do that which is awesome so come over and join our discord server if you're interested L lastly don't forget to follow me on twitter if you want updates about when videos are going to go live if they're going to be late normally they go they go live at 11 a.m each morning but recently i found out that sometimes it's easier to post them straight away once i've recorded them because i'll be too tired in the morning to upload them but again it just depends so that's why follow my twitter the link is in the description and as usual the github link will be in the description also guys thank you for watching this video and peace out